All right. All right. What's up? What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode 30, Planet Xbox Podcast, Weapon Wheel Edition. And today is special. Uh, it's special because I have a good friend here, one of my favorite YouTubers of all time, uh, king of Xbox content, king of PlayStation content, and sometimes <laughs> emulation, and sometimes a Nintendo YouTuber, according to the comment section of one of your recent videos I watched. Uh, Once in a great while. <laughs> Shout out to RGT85. Welcome uh, to the show. Welcome to the podcast. Great to have you, man. How are you? Hey, thanks for having me on. Doing well. It was a, it was a fun week this week for, um, I think, everyone. Uh, you know, everyone got a little taste of something. Xbox, PlayStation got news. Nintendo Switch got no news. And, you know, people were scrambling to make direct videos every freaking day. So <laughs> it was a fun time. It was a fun time. Oh, uh, man, this is the... Uh, well, that special time of year where everybody's highly anticipating uh you know the directs showcases and and this is all the the, the time that everyone's typically wrong um and, a, a, as we're seeing uh just to give the uh you know the viewers uh addict should be here at some point in the next you know 10 to 15 minutes he's busy uh i know he's producing a, a king david show of the iron lords podcast uh once that wraps up he should jump in here uh, we'll definitely get to the Patreon questions probably when he comes in, but I'm going to, uh, uh, talk some, uh, smack with the RGT in regards to this week. Cause are you, you've been putting out a lot of, I mean, you always, you're consistent with your content, right? Um, uh, but you've been following this Xbox business update fairly close and you've had a couple theories there. Uh, that was interesting. Um, and I still lean towards one of your theories. You mentioned, um, that the timing sh should coincide with one of the uh, an upcoming direct, and only reason why I, I I I like I believe that is because in the business update you know they refuse to name the games right, and right. who are they waiting for? They say they're waiting for the developers to do it. Yeah. I, no, <laughs> I'm like okay, this is probably a, a situation where this is probably gonna it's not gonna be announced by Xbox. It, it, it'll probably be announced by the respective platforms that are getting these games. And uh, in that, with that case, now that the, the business update is over, like, what do you see happening? Well, it, the, the rumor is that the next direct is a partner showcase, meaning that Nintendo won't have any of their games there. It'll just be third party developers. And I could definitely see you know, because because you got to kind of take it back to January when yep. really all of this sort of stuff started. When the first yeah. reports came out there that Sea of Thieves and Hi-Fi Rush were potentially going multi-platform, which is what people should have stuck with. Because, you know, as we've seen, it looks like those are two of the four games, the other two being Grounded and Pentiment. Um, all of which are games that would make sense for other platforms. Two of them are games that are, you know, live service games. And two of them are well received, but smaller titles in the grand scheme of things as far as what Xbox does. So I think those games and this Xbox partnership will be on display at this direct um, whenever it does happen. I still think one will happen this month. I know some people put out into the atmosphere that, oh, because Microsoft's thing was on Thursday, Nintendo didn't want to no, shut up. Like that, that's such a stupid theory because of the fact that Nintendo and state of plays have literally been on the same day. So why, you know, why would they, why is Microsoft? That's the, the big deal. No, they work with that company more so than they work with PlayStation. So I was, I, I was actually kind of surprised that there wasn't a direct on Thursday, but you know, allegedly it's next week. And then if it's not next week, it'll be the week after until it eventually happens. Yeah. I, um, I'm looking for I I've, I I'm looking forward to the direct now. I usually don't I typically miss directs. I don't know what happens when they come. I'm just either not available. I'm usually probably at work, but and I and I'm never highly anticipated because I'm not obviously the biggest Nintendo uh fan, but I'm looking forward to this one because I want to know if all four games will be at the next uh the the, the next direct essentially. I I almost think it'll be a trickle where two of them will show up. I think Sea of Thieves 
and Hi-Fi Rush will show up. And then I think Pentiment, uh, well, I don't know. Because I've heard, I've heard that Pentiment has been a thing for a while. And mm-hmm. so maybe it's like Pentiment and Hi-Fi Rush and then Sea of Thieves and Grounded or later or something like that. Because we got that Sea of Thieves um, tease. Yeah. From- twitter page and it's kind of yeah. like oh well this is coming to everything there's and the I, violets are red something like that something with the yeah yeah blue and red yeah and green it's like the white thing i'm assuming was maybe max i don't know it could be apple yeah um um but i have to say sea of thieves you know if you watch the the documentary that mm-hmm. rare put up uh, I make an appearance on there saying that the game sucks and it's not going to last more than six months because initially when that game came out, it was very sparse. However, within the past six months or so, I actually played it with like Spawn Wave, MVG, and Nate, um, and we had a blast playing it. it. It's definitely become a much more fun game. So I'm I'm glad to see that that game is kind mm-hmm. of spreading its wings because you've you know you've reached your your market cap on people yeah. that are probably going to play it on xbox why not why not increase that player base it's gonna it's more than likely gonna have cross play as well yeah yeah because yeah. nintendo and um, microsoft do that so you yeah, know sounds good to me yeah i it makes sense it is I, I i would suspect like the hi-fi rush you know port is probably done at this point yeah i think pentiment I, I probably also that one was developed like I, I feel like that was like a, a side game. They did it fairly quickly. They could probably easily put out a Nintendo port. It's not a demanding type of game. Um, I, it would make sense if Sea of Thieves and um, Grounded are uh, like a little bit later. But then when you consider Sea of Thieves and Ground, Sea of Thieves is, is in a, a originally just an Xbox One game, right? right. That's that's what. It, so it's and these games are probably coming not only to the PS uh, Five but also to the PS Four. Because these are all yeah. essentially last generation games, with the exception of, weirdly enough, Hi Fi Rush and Pentiment, I don't think are available natively on the Xbox One. I know Hi Fi Rush isn't. Yeah, I'm not sure about Pentiment. Um, yeah, Hi Fi Rush isn't. But Grounded was on Xbox One. Yeah, it, it was yeah. on Xbox One. It, it came there through the uh, preview program and it's just been yeah. updated over uh, time. Um, but this, this update, you know, bought out. A lot and i tried to break it down in a video and i realized i was having mic issues so now it's probably the worst videos i have uploaded right now <laughs> because, oh, you uploaded it yeah too. because I, the video was 41 minutes long and i didn't bother to play it back <laughs> <laughs> and so people and i premiered the video so i'm getting <laughs> me- <laughs> so i'm getting messages and like hey dude turn up the volume fix your mic and i'm like what the hell are you talking about and then i'm look, i'm like oh no and he and so i was like he's like oh i just realized this is not live it's premiered and i was like dude how long were these cutouts he was like well you had a stretch of a minute where we just couldn't hear nothing and i'm like great <laughs> so but i tried to break down this whole thing because and you said something earlier uh that i also said in that video when it was first rumored to be the Hi-Fi Russian Sea of Thieves, now this all started even before the Xbox developer direct. When it was right. that, it was like, yeah, we were asking questions like, uh, <clears throat> we want to know, I want to know what this means for other things. But knowing that it was just those two games, we weren't really losing our minds like that. It was, we were managing. I was like, okay, we were coping a little bit. Like, why Hi-Fi Rush? It was a new IP, but see if these we didn't really care we were managing to the point where when the developer direct came we actually got over it because yeah, we were so happy to see developer direct was great. Yeah, yeah we got to see hellblade 2 indiana jones and avowed and whatnot so we got over it and then uh, it, it, the rumors come back up again right because hi-fi rush i think had the little uh da- data mine thing yeah. that they were saying with the t-shirts it's like okay okay whatever it's okay it's true and then out of the blue more games started coming, but it was big games. So it's like, okay, Starfield, Indiana Jones, Halo, Gears. Like, I'm like, and it was, I feel like our updates, a new game was coming. I'm like, what's going on? And I think that's when, as a, I would say, I can't, I can't speak for all X, Xbox fanboys, but for me, is when I kind of lost my marbles. Because I was like, all right, this is not making sense. To the point I was like, yo, stop reporting. Stop the count. Just stop. That's I, I was I was actually getting bothered by it. 
And I'm like, it, it got to the point in it, and with these updates and articles being written, it started to, it, it even it, it started to expand. Like, Xbox is getting out of the hardware business. Game Pass, no more day one games and Game Pass. It was going all over the place. So, and that had like what a whole week or two to marinate. Uh, it was a, a little over a week and a half. Yeah, that, to, came, that, that came out on a Sunday, and it wasn't until the the next Thursday like, of, yeah, that and we learned that we got the event, which is crazy. And 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 what made it problematic, right? And you being a YouTuber, I'm pretty sure all everybody that reported on this were people you've quoted before for, for breaking news, mm-hmm. right? So you see the things like you see like Tom Warren, you see Xbox Era, you see Jeff Grubb, you see Jez Corden, and and you're like. At that point, as an as an Xbox fan, where I was at that moment, I was like, "Bro, I I, I can't do this. I can't. This is this this is it. This is it." Because yeah. I'm relying on these are the people I trust because they've been right so many times before. It's like this is the information that they're giving us, and it, it appears to be true. So you know, all bets are off. This is the end for Xbox. And then yeah. something random happened. I don't know if it's Nate the Hate that started the trend to, to, to say, "Hey, I'm not too sure," but. You, there was a, some sort of shift where things started to get like, uh, well, maybe not this, maybe not that, but you no, know, I think was it Nate the Hate that was the first one to break away from because Nate the Hate, I think Nate the Hate started this whole situation with Hi-Fi Rush in his in the podcast yeah. he was in, right? That's how Hi-Fi Rush the whole situation the, the, the started. started he started it, and so it's it's crazy the full circle because he started and then everybody else started to cooperate it, and 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 then it just everybody else was more every time a new person reported on it a new game came with it and um it wasn't until he said that where things started to break away and then there was like internal things that people were like well no this is definitely happening this is definitely happening uh we got the phil i think phil spencer spoke i want to say he said he said the tweet maybe on a monday and said we'll head we'll update us you know in a week or so whatever and then yeah. And then now we got, and then we got yesterday's uh, business update. And my question to you is, with the track record of these people, the chaos that was ensued online between the communities and all the other communities, and what we actually got, I, what was your ultimate like conclusion at the end of the day? It was like, okay, this we were all prepared for this, but this is what we got. Well, see, I'm friends with some of these people, so I talk to them kind of, you know, off the cuff a bit more. Yeah. And if you the the so Sunday was the announcement of Starfield, and then I want to say Monday or Tuesday they started saying Gears of War and in Indiana Jones. Yeah. By that Thursday, I was already off the bandwagon. I was kind of like, no, I don't think this is what it's going to be. And I did a podcast. I did mm-hmm. Mooch's podcast very playstation fan centric over there so people Absolutely. were like you're an idiot you're you're comp-. you know people who didn't know me they're like get this xbox guy off the channel I'm like, finally <laughs> i'm getting recognized but i was just like dude i think there's been a lot of hyperbole i think there's been a lot of misinformation put out there and i'm not expecting this to be a whole big deal yeah and i stood by that the entire time because what ended up happening was that but the problem is is that instead of just you know essentially being wrong like mm-hmm. it, 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 you're you were wrong about starfield you were wrong about indiana jones it's okay that doesn't mean that your sources are necessarily the worst maybe they got bad information it's okay the problem for me is when you're proven wrong and you're like i'm still right because phil spencer said maybe in five to ten years those games will come i'm still right it's like, no you're not nobody was talking the 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 initial xbox era report said it was launching this year alongside of the new dlc yes on playstation 5 that was that the report a, that is that's a definitive statement if you're not sure about this speak in a manner that is clear about it and i just don't like the lack of accountability and if those people want to get mad at me and they don't want to be friends with me anymore that's fine i i really don't care it's nothing personal. I'm just questioning what you're doing. And I have I know people are going to say, well, RGT, you've been wrong about stuff. Yes, I have. Everyone's been wrong about stuff. But I at least try 
to say, hey, you know what? I screwed this up. My bad. Switch Pro. You you want to you know come at me for that? Fine. I I was grossly misinformed on that, and it ended up being an OLED. That's cool. People are going to be wrong about stuff. But I didn't try to be like, what's well, still coming? It's, it's like, no, it's like, OK, this OLED is probably what it was for whatever yeah. reason, COVID or whatever. It's cool. It's cool. But I don't know. It, it rubbed me the wrong way how a lot of the reactions were to things. And then, you know, instead of just being like, hey, you know, because I guess you don't want to be accused of backpedaling. Because that's what happened with Nate. Mm-hmm. Nate came out with that Starfield <laughs> yeah. tweet and those people came after him like condescendingly and it's like wait a minute he ended up being right that starfield wasn't one of the games where's your apology to him where's your oh sorry about that no nobody did anything no that's that's absolutely true is the backpedaling uh happened nate got in front of it and people didn't like it and again it like it's like nate is is such a key part to all this because like i said it all essentially started with him uh i like i don't know if i'm you know giving him too much credit i don't know but that's who i went that's when i first heard about it was a clip of him (laughs) saying you know a game and i think i don't even think he gave the name i think he was given like a hint and people sort of like extracted the name and then the other guys sort of uh cooperated so it's crazy it started with him and it's like they was like wait a minute if you're saying something Something's wrong with you. Like something, like something's wrong with you. Cause it, <laughs> that's pretty much how I took it. And and when they've uh when I saw people going after him, and I think um and and I'm not doing this to be disrespectful, but it, I think it was the Xbox era guys and Tom Warren who were probing him uh after he made his uh his statement about the Starfield uh to pretty much suggest that he's incorrect or that his source is incorrect and um these guys they did double down on what they like you know starfield we have different sources well our sources we never said our source was his source or whatever that's what the xbox era guys did uh what what tom did was uh now tom obviously he's in he's in a game he's seasoned he he has access to this but he went so hard on his reportings that I read his article and I was a bit disgusted. And I like Tom Warren. He's blocked me a couple of times. So the only way I get the view is content is through my like secondary account. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> but um, the thing I didn't like about Tom is like, he's so hell bent on whatever his findings was or whatever his leaks were that when he had the opportunity in a platform, the to- thing was going to happen. I'm sorry. I said, sorry, uh, my camera is for some reason not working. I've been having issues with my camera. That Starfield thing was going to happen. People, here's the thing. People can can assume all they want. I'm telling you, I had people that's literally told me stuff been 100% accurate. Not just Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo. Leaked whole, whole keynotes of, of Nintendo Directs. In order. And they are the ones that also told me Blade was coming to to, to Xbox. Uh, Blade was getting uh, an Xbox game. Or what, Xbox was getting a Blade game. I told you, Smooth, like two weeks before it happened. Did I not? Yeah. And he's also the one that told me the Starfield thing. This dude has never been wrong. Years leaking stuff to me has never been wrong. Maybe he got baited. I don't think he got baited. Not, not with the info this dude always be giving me. So like he'll but, always be telling me stuff. He'll tell me something like two or three weeks before, and then other people start telling me stuff. That's generally how it goes. I, I don't normally re- leak stuff. I, I, I don't like to be known as that. But this particular situation, and, and I can't really give out details, but I was told by people. Lost you. I was told by people in studios that this was happening. And. There was just a drastic change. Now, I don't think this isn't not happening. Part of me feels like all they did was because what they re- realistically tell you, they said, okay, we're having four games come out. And Homegirl said, what are these four games? Is any of them start for Indiana Jones? And he said, no. So all but, he really tells you is the but, first four but games those, isn't Starfield. <laughs> like, uh, the, I, those, one, those are scripted questions. So they wanted that question. Oh, in they, there they, so they, they were done that. specifically in the way they were done. So they have complete deniability. 
if they want to pivot any other way. Uh, but no, the reason why I, I also just wanted to continue to address the whole Tom Warren thing is like, I feel like he's so hell bent on his, uh, his leak or his uh, reportings that he had on the platform that he had after the whole situation with Phil Spencer, he gave, he pretty much, his article is written in a form of, you know, I hear that I hear what you say, but I'm completely ignoring it and I'm drawing my own conclusion. That that's pretty much it. It's like everything he said, he was like even though they denied that Indiana Jones or, you know, Starfield uh was coming, he was like, Oh, but it's not he would like he would write it in such a way that but that's not root out. He would even throw in like Gears of War and all this other stuff. And to the such, it was like, but yo, Phil Spencer is not saying that. Like, write the article based on what he's telling you. Why are you putting, inserting your own, like, theories in here? And then you're presenting that because now you got him a part of this interview and you got your own theories within the same article. It's like people are saying, oh, he's confirming. He confirmed something completely different with Tom Warren than what they just said. And all he was just doing was repeating what he did on the uh, the podcast that they did. So. They're helping. They're gonna. He's gonna ride on that thing, uh, for as long. It, it, it could take five years for where all those games they were mentioning to come in, and they'll eventually come, and then they'll finally be right. But at that point, who's paying attention? I'm not. Like, I got to the point where I had to mature, and people think I'm just trolling. I'm not trolling. I am not trolling. I had to mature over this whole situation. And I, t- I said this in what, who podcast, so somebody had a podcast and I think I donated and I said, PlayStation, I don't, not PlayStation, I don't really care about PlayStation, but I was like, for me, Nintendo and Xbox, and I think I've actually said this a couple times publicly before this was even a rumor, Nintendo and Xbox can share games for all I care. Like, I don't, I don't mind if every game go on Nintendo, it's, I, I, I just don't care. Like, I don't mind when, because there's, I don't mind when Xbox gets, uh, what, what puts games on Nintendo Switch. It's never really been a problem. I think Nintendo is the only other platform that has, has Ori. Um, uh, I, do they got both Ori games or whatever? But and they got, yeah. Xbox clearly gave, put Hellblade literally on a Nintendo Switch two years after buying uh, Ninja Theory. They didn't have to port it there. It was just like, all right, here you go. It's this there. They got a physical copy. I believe they got a physical version too. Um, and so it's like I don't really care. So I'm at I'm at a point where I don't think I'm not going to think that this is horrible or bad for Microsoft if they ultimately decide to do it. Do I think it's smart on their end? Um, yes and no. I say yes and no because they are, they there's a chance they're going to make a lot more money for it. But uh, no because um, only I I don't know what it's going to mean for their console. But for me personally, I don't really care. Um, and I say that because I'm not going to, even if they do uh, decide that they're going to release Starfield uh, when the, the DLC comes out onto PlayStation, if they decide to do that, I'm not going to throw away my Xbox and, you know, abandon my digital library and buy the game again on PlayStation. It just doesn't make sense for me to do that. Uh, gaming is the only medium that has this problem entertainment medium that has this problem like every if you think about it the idea there's no real exclusive any on any other entertainment device or subscription whatever that we utilize it's just we just like i prefer iphone not because it has anything exclusive it's just an iphone <laughs> that, that's pretty much it but it's not like twitter is oh, exclusive no, the to iphone bad boys be pretty crazy smooth. nah I, it's I, not I, as great i remember i came across a chick once and she would literally judge you if you didn't have an iPhone. Yeah, but is she judging you based off the product, though? She'll be like, what's this green text? I'm like, I have an Android. Why don't you have an iPhone? I'm like, you know what? We're we're not talking anymore. Yeah, but that's a a different different sort of thing. They got different problems, right? But there's nothing like... problems. (laughs) Yeah, uh, but there's nothing really that's really say, hey... Uh, iPhone, you buy iPhone because it has more of what? More of what? What really? Just more popular. That's that's all it is. It's more popular. But when it comes to gaming, there's actually physical things that has to that tie us in. If if games just literally all shared the library 100, every game that, that releases on PlayStation releases on Xbox, vice versa. 
you would literally be buying the platform based on preference. And I, and if we lived in a world like that, I would still be buying Xbox because I prefer Xbox to PlayStation. It's not even the games at this point. It's just that I have a PlayStation. I don't. I spend. I literally boot up my PlayStation a couple times a year, and it was one time last year. Spider Man. It ain't gonna be no time this year. So like, it, like when they they're, when they release a game where I was like, okay. I really want to play this game. That's when I boot the up the PlayStation. The amount of time I'm about to put in Rebirth yeah, I was about to say, is going to be enough Rebirth? for both of us. Uh, no, so no. Fine. You said it's going to be enough for both. <laughs> I'm not a Final Fantasy fan. Actually, I actually can't stand Square Enix for the, for the life of me. I I, 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 I despise them as a publisher. That's not, that's not biased in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> you're, getting, you're getting the new Mana game, though. Yeah. yeah the you, developer Direct. Yeah. They, okay, but uh, that's it's a little too late. Square Enix is a horrible publisher. They're bad for business, and they are they put themselves in many of the situations there uh, that they're in. And a lot of people think, that, and that's not an anti PlayStation thing. It's like I don't like the way Square Enix works. They sold off my favorite developer, and now the, who knows what's going to happen to Crystal Dynamics uh, and and Adios. I don't know what's going to happen to them uh, now that they're under Embracer. They. Well, dynamics is too busy putting out warnings for the tomb raider trilogy did you see that yeah uh, the, what, what they said because they kept like original like uh, i don't know what it was they uh, they i no guess representation was was bad and that's not how we think of certain people and tribes and stuff. It's like dude i i don't think anyone's going into this with like yeah no I, person let me play some tomb raider it's like dude. i think i think crystal dynamics i don't know if they're, they're just salty for them not being the ones to port the original games Aspire uh, did a great job though. Hats off to Aspire. They put their A team on that game. That's a that's a really fun trilogy. Did you buy? I see. I didn't buy it because I figured it'd be too it'd be too difficult. I couldn't play video games back then. No, they got modern controls. Okay. They added in modern controls. It gets a little wonky with some of the cameras sometimes with the modern controls, but it looks it looks really good. I and mean, you could switch between the graphical styles on the fly mm -hmm. just by pressing um the start button, so you could kind of see like what they did as far as you know changing things up but it, it's a gorgeous looking game and i've been having a blast playing them i've never i because i never played two or three i played the first one on my sega saturn of all places which wasn't the optimal experience <laughs> so you know it's fun it's fun to go back and play but for like 30 bucks dude yeah it, it's, it's pretty solid yeah i think i've only ever played like the first one and i think that was on like a demo disc yeah um well it's better on playstation than it was on saturn but yeah, I never even owned a Saturn. That's why, like, it's the, the crazy thing is, you know how, like, the the, the uh, perception that uh, people thought Tomb Raider was a PlayStation exclusive this whole entire time, and forget that there was a Saturn version that existed. Yep. <laughs> that that that's funny. That is funny. Um, Attic man. Um, and I know you got uh, some of these sources. But when you got in here, we were pretty much going discussing how. I, pretty much we were led astray um you may disagree with that uh sentiment uh but i think we were I led astray so. i think we were I led think, astray i think journalism I think is toxic out, journalism is toxic the, i think the outcry had them revert certain things and push back other announcements i i don't here's the thing everything they said in that in that whatever the hell they called it like business update that could have been just a wire. They didn't really say much of anything. Mm -hmm. what, what's funny is they're literally showing there's people on Twitter right now going back to when Phil talked about Xbox games going to PC. He's mm -hmm. almost word for word saying the same shit he said when it went to PC. Mm -hmm. That was 2016. Yes, the, 10 years ago. Almost. But my point is, is just because he's saying stuff now does not mean that that's not just pr speaking bruh, wording like, things in a way bruh, that five, gives him enough wiggle room to say yeah what but he wants. five years from now I, I at that point i won't even care but i have a question <laughs> i have a question if that if that is the case what is more important to microsoft shareholders and money or twitter customers because i i don't think that they changed everything because tim dog and <laughs> Cold it wasn't Tim Dog. They were trending on Twitter. It wasn't a couple people. They were trending on Twitter. They were being covered by national news. They were being cut. But see, the thing, I have plenty of friends that's in corporate. 
That's one of the biggest things that has these corporate companies start buckling because guess what national coverage does? It affects your stock. Was right. Microsoft stock impacted throughout this whole tire? I don't know. I didn't look at that shit. But it wasn't. Um, I feel we were led astray. Um, uh, and there was warnings out there that we were led astray when you know, obviously, with certain individuals were backing off on some of the outlandish stuff that was being said. Um, when again, like I said, if the crazy thing, if they kept the rumor. At Sea of Thieves and, and Hi-Fi Rush, we would be okay. We would have been fine with it. it the, the outrage wouldn't have happened. People would have still had, like, some people would have been put off or whatnot, but it wasn't that big a deal. It didn't go stupid until they started mentioning Starfield, Indiana Jones, Gears of War, Halo, uh, and, like, pretty much all the big games you would literally want Xbox to have or that you would b- buy an Xbox for. That's when everybody lost their shit. And then the Game Pass uh no day one game pass stuff that kind of like also set people off xbox getting out of i don't even know where that came from it, it was out there it, it was definitely out there and it got out of control and the thing is is that right now uh well prior to this uh meeting everybody was was were doubling down on what they were reporting with the exception of a few people and it caused a bunch like some rifts between individuals, different uh, people who have access to different sources and whatnot, and um, I, I and that's why I said I think that's what really because before this whole Xbox update, I literally said journalists are toxic, and toxic stuff happened literally right after that uh, uh, update. So you uh, you don't think anybody should be held accountable for what happened? No one's corrected. I'm held accountable. Held accountable for the stuff that they were spewing. Now, if you want to talk about maybe Xbox Air because they actually did initialize all this, then maybe you can have an argument on that one. Here's the thing: it's Twitter. It's just like RGT said. It's it's just a giant scream chamber. But at the same time, mm-hmm. what are we going to do? We're going to start banning people for making tweets like. What what could you realistically do to help to how, hold someone accountable? Uh, I just want to. I'm curious what you mean held accountable. What would you do? Uh, you know, you know what's funny. When you say you're curious, you know how when people tell us we need to hold Xbox accountable for some invisible problem, like uh, Xbox doesn't have any games. You need to hold them accountable. Like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> I I mean my version of holding them holding these guys accountable is calling them out on what they did and they should acknowledge that they were wrong or misled. Yeah, which is all you you really can do. Like I've been wrong about stuff. It's okay. I I come out and say it, you know, oh, hey, I was wrong. Sorry about that. And you know, you'll take I I feel like I feel like some of these journalists not really a god complex but they, they almost have like these egos and whenever you you kind of challenge them on anything you know and, and it all it all boils down to the public perception as if people like them or not like i've had spats with people jason schreier hates me yeah whatever um um adam sessler i got into a big thing with him and he mm-hmm. ended up blocking me but it, it really just sort of boils down to the public's perception of the individual to see like whose side are they on because people are very tribalistic they want someone to be right they like the sensationalism and when when nate the hate started getting blowback for saying hey you know i'm hearing starfield isn't one of the games now i'm, I'm sorry about that and all those people came after him like i lost a ton of respect for those people because that's just ridiculous and and childish and you know you know prodding him with questions and you know thinking that it impacts you no what impacts you is when you're saying these things and then we get this this you know um podcast and what you said isn't coming to fruition so yes you 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 technically were incorrect with this it, it you you could say plans change this that the other but when Xbox era comes out there and says, this is happening, Starfield is launching alongside of the new DLC on PlayStation 5. And See, that- I, wasn't, I wasn't told at launch. I was told after 
it would be coming. Well, yeah, I'm just saying with the Xbox era article. Like, we're talking like a 2026. That's like the time era that I was told around okay. when Starfield would be hitting. Right, but I mean, they were coming out there saying essentially this year, and it's like, and then I no, well, that's not true. So you know what they were doing? They were they were speculating because the leaks showed Bethesda having that expansion come out this year, but also like eight things on that damn uh, roadmap were wrong in terms of time because of the pandemic. So it's like they 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 don't know when the hell that DLC is coming out. <laughs> <It's> just... <clears throat> And then, yeah, because they also said that they made additional investments in PlayStation 5 dev kits. Dev kits, yeah. yeah. Ongoing effort and stuff. And it's like... Really? You know, the, the, I checked it on that. That's bogus, too. Yeah. So, I, I just think there was some misinformation. People, higher up people in the hierarchy of, of reporting and stuff, started peddling the information, saying that they heard the same thing, whether it was the same sources, whether they heard nothing at all. You know, who's to really say? But... As far as the accountability is concerned, you know, I just kind of look at people through a different lens. I have friends who are quote unquote leakers and I look at their track record and I remember things that they say. And even I sometimes look at my friends and I'm like, you know, they'll come out with something. I'll be like, mm, I don't think I'm going to report on that because I, I don't think that's a valid thing. <laughs> RGT, you know, what's the funniest part when people say stuff years ago. And it just so happens to happen, and they oh act like God. I said it in 2012. <laughs> the victory lap, the victory lap is coming. Like, I mean, it, that's that's just kind of leak culture in general, though. You know, nobody, you know, I should say most people aren't mm. always going to be right all the time. It's okay to be wrong about things, but when you don't acknowledge that you are wrong about things, it kind of gives, at least for me, it gives me this sort of you know, holier than thou sort of ego perception. And I, I don't really like to see that with people because at the end of the day, we're talking about fucking video games. Like, you know, this is really a... a I didn't like the dogpiling that went on over this because it's mm -hmm. like, look, I feel strong that this this was... It's not that this, that they, like, went back on plans. I don't think they was ever going to announce Starfield this early. Uh, yeah, I don't know where Xbox Air got that info for from. The way when I was told it was going to be announced after the expansion came out. It wasn't coming out this year. It was going to be announced after, and it would be like six months after the expansion. So this wasn't going to be this year anyway in terms of, like, the announcement. So it's like, look, you know, if they changed it, they changed it. They didn't, they didn't. The reason I'm so adamant that I do believe this was a real thing just because the particular source. Now, this one individual, like I said, if he wouldn't have said it, I wouldn't be so adamant about it. Uh, you, I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was because uh, I, I, I was told by a couple of uh, people that Microsoft had like a 12 hour meeting the day after. I'm sure they would. <laughs> and, and I don't know what was said in there. I don't know if they changed things. I don't know if they decided to, you know, reword certain things or, you know, maybe push certain things back. Because even Phil said on there, we had plans later on for this but because of things that's going on we have to say it now uh, i think it was probably next year because not not next year next month because that it was probably a, a couple days before they were going to have diablo show up on game pass mm -hmm. so this is like look <clears throat> here's the thing even even if i'm straight up wrong doesn't really give anyone the uh, initial reaction to just start dogpiling on me and saying stuff like you're out of the Xbox community. Motherfucker, I didn't want to be in this community with <laughs> bitches like you anyway. So yeah, like, like, that's that's the the extreme <laughs> psycho people out there that do shit like that. But people yeah. call me scum. Someone literally super chatted King's podcast calling me a scum. For what? <laughs> Thanks for the <laughs> money, pal. <laughs> Just because I said I said, you know, uh they, they call me mustard heart. Uh, it, it got to the point where I had to take the mustard heart and say, well, I guess I'm the mustard heart general because yeah. I'm not backing down from this. And it's like, it, it is what it is. I just don't like the the moment you don't agree with someone. Now, we're not looking to disagree. We're looking to end you. We don't want you having a voice. We want we want to kill every metric. It's like it's like a lower version. It's like a level one version of cancel, canceling. Like, there's the level three that, like, the... The, the the nuclear one, it's like the level one. It's like let let's dogpile him. Let's get his ass. Like yeah. it's like damn man. Like, you know, and what's funny is 
the same people that was like attacking like Tim Dog and stuff. Like, look, Tim Dog was definitely being way too emotional, and they, he would even admit that. But it's like at the same time, it's easy to sit there and attack one person, but then the same people that was attacking the Tim Dog thing, they just they're completely ghosts. That people are being personal to Jess Corden for no reason. People are, I don't know if any death threats have been sent, but I, I, I had someone DM me called me a cocksucker. So, uh, you know, it, it's just crazy that people, they co sign some behavior, but other behavior, they're like, no, that that's not right. You know, Tim Doc shouldn't be acting like that. Oh, you call an addict a cocksucker in his DMs? Yeah, we got that. We got to do that. Let's, let's double down on that behavior. <laughs> Dude, like, I'm going to tell you a couple of things. Uh, of how uh, three examples of how how bad this uh in rgt he's he, he got a a few things that happened but how bad that this whole rumor and stuff got out of hand right so i was getting messages on xbox from just random people right and it was like hey uh they was like hey kids move uh with everything going on with xbox where are you going to play your games at <laughs> and i was like the, real quick is your cover picture still fuck xbox no, I changed it. I updated. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I have grown. Now you I've matured. That message to make sure you didn't do something stupid like nah, change, nah. like break your shit from kicking the wall or something. Yeah, no, like you know, I would. I, 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 I'm not gonna lie. I've been. I've been very immature. Gaming has kept me <laughs> immature. Console gaming, console wars has kept me immature. And um, I, I will get through this. I will get through this normally. I will grow this. None is of this stuff a is going to bother or a therapy me. Session? This, this is a <laughs> podcast, but so I got a message. They were asking like, Hey, are you still, where are you going to be playing your games now? Moving forward? Are you going to stay with Xbox? And I was like, yeah, I'm going to stay with Xbox. I'm upset, but I ain't like, it's not at the end of the day. It's like, it is what it is. Right. And then my best friend calls me, um, who's not in, the gaming like he literally only gets new xboxes because i tell him one has come out um but he like if if i did not tell him that he would still be on 2013 xbox one um he he, he facetimes me and he's like hey like um is it true xbox is not making any consoles this is how bad the rumor has gotten and i'm like no dude i was like it's like nah he was like, oh, okay. So I heard that they weren't making no consoles and they are bringing all their games to PlayStation. I was he like, probably follows you on Twitter and saw you spy. Nah, out he's not. He's not even on Twitter. Twitter. He's not on Twitter. Uh, that's the thing. He's not on Twitter. Um, he's on LinkedIn and, and, and Facebook. Um, so he was, he was like, oh, he's like, okay. So he said, oh, okay. So I was like, I was like, yeah. I was like, they are bringing, he said, it's true they bring games to PlayStation. I was like, yeah, they are bringing games to PlayStation. But I'm telling you right now, the games that are coming to PlayStation fairly soon, none of them you've ever played, and you probably even haven't even heard of them. He was like, "Oh, you really? You won't even like." And so <laughs> I named all. The, Rush, that was a good game. I, I named all the games. He was not familiar that any of these games existed. So, like, he's like, "Oh, he's like, he said the first thing he told me, he's like, you know, what? it makes sense. They probably have to do that because don't they own Call of Duty now, right? And um, because he follows Microsoft, he doesn't follow like Xbox. He's like." He's like, yeah. He's like, yeah. He's like, yeah. Well, they gotta, they gotta continue to release games on, you know, PlayStation and everything because he's like, otherwise, the FTC is gonna be after them for Monopoly. He don't even know that there's an active case going you, on. <laughs> you know what the worst part about this whole scenario is? Yeah, it has put King on such a high that I don't know if we could ever talk him down anymore. <laughs> like he, he's gotten to the point where this hold the line movement is just completely got out of control, and and now he like. Like he, he's just gonna be too extra at all time, twenty four day, twenty four hours, seven days a week. There's no stopping this man at this point. Like, nah, it, what's funny is like they they go and they're like they're like uh they put me. I don't know what this shit came from. I think it was AI generated, mm -hmm. but it showed me running from like a battle. It said Attic is key is general fleeing the line. I'm like, oh my god. Somebody told me, uh, hold the line in question mark after my thing on Twitter. I was like, I'm walking over it. I, I, I've been delivered. So, uh, <laughs> my, my hey, wife, RGT, how long do you think this going to last? I, oh, I, maybe a month. <laughs> I don't even give it that far. <laughs> I can't walk it back. I can't, I, I, I can't. It's like, it, it, it is what it is. 
my my wife has a my my wife works from home and like they have a chat and I think one of the dudes is like uh like somewhat of a gamer and he puts in the chat like yeah, he hinted that he was upset with Microsoft because they're getting rid of Xbox and then so so my wife asked me she, she knows I obviously I'm in the know with gaming and stuff like that so she asked me she's like so hey babe is is Microsoft getting rid of Xbox and I was like no where'd you hear that from. And she was like, oh, so uh, somebody I work with, he plays games and, and he's freaking out because Microsoft is about to give her the Xbox. I guess, like, that's like, I, visualize, I guess I visualize, and I know it's probably not fair to you, like, when you're tweeting, like, and you're, like, updating fuck Xbox that you're just in a bad mood 24-7 at your house. And, like, I just envision, like, your your wife coming up, what is your problem? Xbox is going away. You're just walking away. <laughs> Like, like like when uh Dreamcast guy ripped his uh Diablo shirt and he's got the smooth's got the Xbox shirt. Ah, I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah, man, it's uh the thing is is that how I'm trying to like I I I really don't think I'd be bothered by it. Now the only thing is is that I just wish and, and one can only wish that PlayStation just give up some of their games. And all I really want is Spider Man. And like, I mean, like I I play Spider Man on PC. I, I went through the game again on PC, but like, come on, it don't hurt. Like, give us some of the old games. Because if you think about it, right, there's a bunch of games that are literally dying or 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 dead and stuck on a PS4 and a PS3 is just just there to just rot because it's, it was an exclusive, it, never to be played again. They're just Metal sitting Gear there. Solid 4. Yeah. I would, I would fucking for, kill to have that brought For back. no reason. Like, that's crazy. That that think of that's why I'm like, yo, it's not really all all that bad. Like so, like for example, I mean, sure, give PlayStation Sunset Overdrive. Let them let them have it. They they own the original developer. You know I, what I mean? I guess to me, like I got so much money invested into the Xbox ecosystem. Mm -hmm. I'm just worried that they would do something like this and that's if they like truly went third party no exclusives yeah. on their platform at all and with the cells are so bad as it is i'm like do you guys really see that braining up like i i see that going down especially the beginning of next gen and mm -hmm. i could just see microsoft do what microsoft does best it's like they evaluated we're not making <clears throat> we have to make x amount of money to make sense keeping the xbox ecosystem up and going and once you fall way below that and they only sell like a couple million a year if that i could see them pulling the plug on the whole thing and it's just like look we're we're, we're going full multiply and like that that's my only thing like i don't care other people playing the game mm -hmm. it's just my thing is like if you take enough value out of your own ecosystem mm -hmm. when's that going to start biting you back in the ass it, 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 it i get it um, that's why a certain like something like this is why the industry is behind on many, many, many things. You know what I mean? We okay being all digital with music and movies. Um, we're okay with you know DRM on everything else, but you no. Know. But see, he, the thing is, is people even do that now with mm -hmm. even content. Like Joe Rogan had an exclusive like content uh, with um, Spotify for how many years? Like mm -hmm. they're all every industry is doing exclusives to some degree. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, the thing is, though, when you consider, like, if I'm Joe Rogan, yeah, if somebody's willing to give me a bag to produce my podcast on just their platform, that's one thing. It's like, it's not like Joe Rogan's podcast is getting paid, like, exclusively by the millions and millions of viewers, because I'm pretty sure he would take that if, it, if he gets paid more to be viewed by everyone because everybody's paying him individually to access his podcast. That's different. Here you have an individual who's being offered a bag to stream his a podcast on one platform. It's it's not the same as like video games and and and, and music and stuff like that. Look at this, right? And this and this is probably not uncomparable, right? But what do you think happened with the iPhone after they were free from AT and T's exclusivity? I didn't know they had exclusivity on AT and T. Uh, were you born in two thousand eight? I've never had an iPhone. All right, so when iPhone first came out, I think it was two thousand seven. I think it was my freshman year in 
college. I remember I see this weird dude in a trench coat. He was the first one I saw with it in person. Um, it, um, and the iPhones back then were big, like kind of like how they are now, right? But they were a little, uh, they weren't as square. There was like kind of, um, they were rounded. And it came out in 2007, and it was exclusive to AT&T. AT&T was the only provider that could sell iPhones. And that lasted for about four years because about time my carrier got iPhone, they were already on the iPhone 4. And once every other carrier, Verizon, Sprint, T-Mobile were able to get, I, sky's the limit. Never look back. It's, I feel you, but once again, these these companies are doing stuff to incentivize buying their listen, their phone. They're reaching out to these yeah, companies. Yeah, that's Yo, why you, I want to do this promotion. I'll I'll sell you to this at, at whole value for this holiday. They're still doing promotions and, trying and you to can, get people to get there. You stuff. can you can still and Xbox can still do that. That's why you know Game Passes exist. I will for I will play on Game Xbox. Because of Game Pass, right? But I will buy. I would get. I, I would consume I Xbox games on Xbox because of Game Pass. I would not consume Xbox games on PC. Also, ga- a- a- playing on Xbox is literally anything. For example, when I buy a game on Xbox or consume a game on Game Pass, I have access. Think about this: how I get an access to those games. Xbox, PC, Rogue Ally, my MetaQuest Three, and um, my phone and my Samsung TV. I got six devices that I actually use. Where I can access to those games or my subscriptions uh, through Xbox, buying that game on PlayStation, right, does not give me that same freedom. I'm just within that box that's going to be alive for seven years. Look, I've always been the the advocate person through our years, and maybe uh, RGT can uh, agree to disagree. I I don't know how much besides Nintendo. I think Nintendo's a little different. I don't know how much realistically. When you're when you're a console manufacturer that has like a really healthy relationship with a lot of third party, mm-hmm. how much your your exclusives are really selling over something like a Call of Duty marketing, a a Madden marketing, a 2K marketing? I don't know. Uh, you know, I never thought we'd find out, but you know, <laughs> we might. Like, so it's just like I do think Nintendo they they almost solely go off their exclusives. It's the only reason I got to switch because I, I want to play their exclusive mm-hmm. games, but. And when it comes to PlayStation and, and Xbox, because they do have a, a vast majority of like the popular third party stuff, I couldn't. I if you told me, Attic Call of Duty sells more consoles than all the exclusives combined every year, I'd probably agree with you because mm. what do you see at the end of every? It, it's not. It's not a coincidence to me that almost every time a console generation is won by a manufacturer, either PlayStation or or, um, or Microsoft. Uh, well, Microsoft has never really won one. They've always had the marketing rights. 360, Xbox had it, PS4, PlayStation had it. So clearly that has some form of power to have that. And, and it's just like, look, we've never really had a a generation or, or anything in gaming that's mm. solely relying on who's promoting their console better and not necessarily who's making the better games on the console. And, you know, maybe we'll see that, you know. Uh, I will say that in terms of like features, I, I think Xbox definitely has better features than than the PlayStation. But PlayStation, as a whole, has better games than than Xbox. And, so my question you know, to you is, why do you uh, do you prefer Xbox or PlayStation? I prefer Xbox. Why? Because they they do have the games that I want. I'm a huge Ooh. RPG fan. I'm I'm looking forward to Avowed. I'm looking forward to Fable. Prior I love to that, Halo. those are all upcoming. Prior to that, because you preferred Xbox over PlayStation, and, and prior to these d- this new wave of games that they're producing, they uh, you don't you didn't even rock with half of their exclusives. So, so why I, I I bought it a I bought it an original Xbox for the original Fable. Okay, and I bought a 360 for Fable too. Like Fable is when like the key component that's kept me in the Xbox ecosystem. I played a lot of Halo. Like I have a ridiculous amount of time in Halo Three. Like and and I would say Halo Three was such an iconic game that I almost had a 360 entirely for Halo Three, and, and, and that went on to Halo Three, uh, Halo Four, Halo Five. Like, look, like Halo was used to be such a dominant name that it could carry an entire brand because of it. Mm-hmm. But we're no longer in that market anymore. Back then, they didn't have these free to plays running wild everywhere. It, you could actually compete with this with the game like Halo, but mm-hmm. now it's just like you don't have a battle royale. 
automatically a minus one. You might you might not recover just from that one alone. If your game's not free to play, another minus one. It, it's not an easy time to compete in the times that we currently are in. And I think the industry, like you said, has just changed so much. Like look at look at the difference between the 360 era and the era we are in now as far as games are concerned as far as the rise of the free-to-play games or the games as a service games games that are taking you know five six times the amount of time to develop and five to six times the amount of money to develop like i i think the industry Although you're seeing all of these like record breaking profits and stuff like that, which is that's know, a minority. Yeah. Like I just feel like we're getting to this weird point where it's like you the know, bubble's about at, to burst. Yeah. Look at what look at what happened with PlayStation this week that was completely lost in all of the sauce of the Xbox stuff. Like that's pretty concerning considering it's... how, you know, strong PlayStation has been you know this generation thus far to hear them be like oh you know sales are down and yeah, the games it's like mike it's like they say oh xbox is having a really bad day on twitter yo call them drop that shit a week early i don't <laughs> give a fuck what you gotta say like <laughs> yo, it, we're just, talking about our shit tomorrow <laughs> yeah it, it just kind of came and went so you know it's the the industry is in a very volatile state right now and and i don't you know, think it's going to self-correct i do think there's going to be a, a crash to yeah. some degree yeah, I don't think it'll be like how it was in the states with the the eighty four crash or whatever, when it was eighty two crash, whenever it was. I, don't, I wasn't born yet. Well, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong. That was like way before my time, but a lot of that was is just because the industry was so small at that time. It, it couldn't self correct because it was so small. Yeah, well, I mean, it was mostly <clears throat> there was a lot of console manufacturers out there, mm -hmm. and oh. a lot of people were trying to do different things, and it just got to the point of where you know, a couple failures of games that, you know, people banked on. And then, you know, it just went tits up. Nobody wanted anything. Mean, that's why the Nintendo, that's why the NES is the Nintendo entertainment system. Cause the word video game had a negative stigma attached to it. No mm. company wanted to be involved with that, at least in the United States over in Europe, things were, you know, business as usual and everything was, was fine over there with that market. And I don't think it'll be that <laughs> drastic, but I, I think there'll be I, a drastic change in how triple A's are produced though. Yeah. Well, we're already seeing it. Yeah. Look at, look at like the, the PlayStation two and PlayStation three era of triple A releases of, of first party releases from, for both Sony and Microsoft and compare it to what we've gotten with this generation. It, it's night and day, dude. You could look at like 2001 for the PlayStation two and been like, holy, look at all, look at all these games. They just all came out in the same year. That's unheard of. And it's just, you know, third parties are feeling it. First parties are feeling it. And, you know, at, at some point in time, there has to be a breaking point. And I definitely feel like we are marching towards that. Yeah, people forget Grand Theft Auto used to be an annual game. Rockstar used to make lots of games. Yeah. They... Warriors, Bully, the weird ping pong I will... game manhunt like they used to midnight just, club then, dude, I, they made tons of games and now all I they will, make is the call of the, or the I, of photos. I will agree that the more appealing we became to like high level investors the worse it would start to become because now the industry don't want to take enough creative risk because they're like look why take this creative risk well like GTA will come out. It's gonna pay everyone's roles. We don't need this other shit. Like, yeah. put all that money into GTA. <laughs> well, I mean, and that creative risk could, you know, hurt your company, or in some cases, you know, with smaller companies, it could completely wipe you out. Like yeah. the, the the margin of error. Like, there's people. Like, people came out with Suicide Squad, tweeting, "Hey, if this game doesn't do good." these developers might be out on rock steady might shut down. It's like, that's not my problem. I'm the consumer. If I don't like something, I'm not going to buy the game. Loki trying to guilt trip you to go buy the game. Yeah. <laughs> like what the hell is this? And like, that actually yeah. kind of makes me not want to buy the game. It's like, you're going to try to guilt trip me. It'd be different if I'm looking at a game and I'm like, you know what? Like Callisto protocol. I actually felt like, even though it didn't vibe with me, like I would have liked it. 
I would have wished for that studio to get another shot because I felt like they had something. They just got to go back and re refinance it uh, or re restructure it. The dude who would go on stage, I, I really like listening to him talk. Like he was entertaining. It wasn't like a lot of other, you know, presenters in video games. But yeah, like look at Callisto Protocol. Look at that. Um, oh God, what was that game? Um, the EA game that. Oh, uh, uh, Immortals. Magic. Immortals of yeah, Avenum. Immor yeah. Like, there you go. Bye. We're done. See you later. You're all out of jobs. Like the that's the, crazy, the, dude. The Switch Force dude, the Switch Force channel guy, was the marketing guy for that game. And yo, bye. Sorry. Like, it's it's just crazy. It's just crazy. I mean, I'm 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 like, I got to play the trial at Immortals of Avenue, and and maybe I I I played a role in the game not being successful, but I was just waiting for it to launch in the game pass. That's that's uh, it should be in there pretty soon. Like, I, I mean, I think, I think the game is cool. It's just, I, I here's, here's the thing though, smooth. I'm convinced that look, are there people in the middle that would buy a game? If, um, that would still buy the game. If, if game pass didn't exist. Yeah. I would say the majority of the people that don't buy a game, if it's not in game pass, they're in that middle where they're like, Yo, I kind of want it, but I don't know. Uh, if you were anticipating that game, you were buying that with or without Game Pass. Like, nine times out of ten, you weren't buying that shit if Game Pass was was around or was not around. So like, no, 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 no. Nothing no. about that game I know Ooh, would Immortals? appeal to you. So you, you sure? would have bought that game. No, you, not you no, I would. Yeah, I played that. I played the trial. I wouldn't have bought it day one. Absolutely not. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't have bought it day one. I would have bought it at the time because right now I think it's on sale for like fifty percent off. So it, this would be the time that I would buy it. But I was like, oh, I know it was coming to game. Off and it's not on your Xbox right now. Yeah, because right. I'm waiting for it to <laughs> Game Pass. <laughs> what if the, that uh, it, to be coming to Game Pass? Yes, EA games go to uh, original. Uh, they uh, Game Pass Ultimate will go to. Oh, well. Yeah. Um, I do think there is an issue with that. Like, I, I got a lot of flank from the Xbox community because I said a lot of the uh, core issues that Xbox has right now is because of Game Pass. Well, uh, yes. Um, uh, my thing is is that Game Pass isn't isn't marketed to the degree it, it is. Like, they need to go beyond Twitter. They need to market like how everybody else markets. I see Hulu commercials all the time. I see Netflix commercials all the time. Market Game Pass that way if you want broad appeal you know what i mean I by marketing terrible marketing yeah that they're horrible terrible fucking marketing it's like they they rely on word of mouth like way too much the problem is is like clearly it's not like no one's talking about it like i i don't ever see like i have a friend that's that's in the uh, pr industry and like he's one of the people that like reaches out to influencers and people on tiktok and he said Xbox does almost do none of that. They do almost none of that. And it's just like, especially TikTok, like a lot of the younger audience are on that app and you're almost not on it at all. So it's just like, what do you expect? You know, I do think that there are certain things that they will put money behind marketing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I personally believe because of Game Pass, it's led to a lot of lack of uh, a few things like time exclusives. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the reason they don't really push for those anymore is because when you talk to Square Enix and, you know, you're trying to get these uh, these timed exclusives, and uh, obviously they got to go in Game Pass because that, that's your whole persona. Yeah, it doesn't make sense for it, Xbox so, to get a timed exclusive. So you're going to have to not only pay the marketing and the timed exclusivity, you have to also put money behind that to get it on Game Pass day and day. I feel like that's one of the reasons they don't push as hard for marketing t bigger title games anymore because – you got to pay for the marketing and you got to pay for them to put it in Game Pass day and day. Like, sure, they still go after certain games and maybe that's like pre-existing relationships that that's just carried over throughout the years. But it's just like, you know, I, I do feel that way. I feel like, you know, one of the reasons that they don't really push for those time exclusives as much is because they know that it's going to put like another zero if they want that also on their platform and they want to put it in Game Pass day and day because if it's only on Xbox they, it, and it's going to be cannibalized by the by the Game Pass service, clearly the publisher going to be like, okay, you're going to have to give me all the money up front, not half, not a fraction. I'm going to need all that money up front. My thing is, though, um, oh, I forget what I was going to say, man. Oh, my God. 
crap. Uh, my thing is, Xbox ain't going to invest in time exclusive if they're about to put their games on PlayStation and Nintendo. Well, What's I'm the point? I'm not talking about right now. I'm talking yeah, but about in general. Up until now. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I, the, the you marketing... look at their, their, if you look at it up until now, they they don't even really push for indie exclusives as much anymore. Like, yeah, yeah most they do. Time, they still got indie exclusives. Yeah, but the, it's usually with the the Xbox publishing, whatever the hell that that shit's called. And yeah, like, when, when they, they work it. with a company, I'm talking about like working with smaller indie developers. It's not. Oh my god, who's calling me? Okay, keep keep going. Someone's calling me. Yeah. Um. Yeah, no, no, but I I agree. Their marketing has has been horrendous. I don't know who they lost. I don't know where because it was. I feel like it, early Xbox One generation was decent. They had decent marketing. I still remember that Titanfall commercial. Um, when it do is I think was walk uh walking through uh the Titan was walking through um I think uh Manhattan or something like that. Took yeah. the dude out of his building. Um, I uh but yeah but as far as like I think. With Microsoft, it, it, it's crazy because they don't market Xbox, and and therefore the Xbox doesn't sell. Therefore, they don't get new Game Pass subscribers. Therefore, on their investment calls, everything is down, and then they overreact to that. And it's like, bro, if you just put some money into highlighting your product, you can. You don't have to. You can advertise your Xbox. If you advertise Xbox, you will sell Game Pass. If you advertise Game Pass, you will sell Xbox. It's Hand in hand, it's like I don't know why they don't do. I, I don't understand why they don't do that. Um, I agree. Like, the best way to sell X, uh, the best way to sell subscription services is to sell the hardware it comes with. Yeah, and they expect, and they get somebody. Hopefully, they listen to the. They listen to themselves speak. Do they hear themselves? Uh, Matt Booty well, here, confirms it, that. Is, is, Matt oh, Booty, say, the thing it. Oh, let's go ahead and finish. No, I was gonna say Matt Booty confirmed that Game Pass is only gonna be on Xbox and PC. Okay. Which is interesting they've said that. I don't think they've ever said that. Like, I even think Phil Spencer said that, you know, our games go wherever Game Pass is. Now, it went from that to, we'll only ever be on Xbox. I, they, I think these, these other companies are like, laugh them out of the room. No, because Apple made it harder for them to get on there. So they, they're ruling out the mobile. You, sure, you can probably get on Android and stuff like that, maybe. Um, and then, you know, PlayStation and Nintendo are not doing it because they got games to sell on their platform and Game Pass would be eating into that uh, service. So, yeah. So, so RGT, what I want from you is like, we don't really get a lot of like outsides perspectives on the Xbox platform. Um, RGT is the know, king of Xbox. <laughs> huh? Self-proclaimed. Self-proclaimed king of Xbox. <laughs> I just want like your opinion on what you think right now is wrong with the Xbox brand. I think there's a lot of shit wrong. I just want to know what you think's wrong. Yeah, with I mean, there there definitely is. I think, you know, mixed messaging doesn't help things. You know, I I feel like there is that that mixed messaging that they have. You know, what what are we focused on? Is it the hardware? Is it Game Pass? Is it both of them? Is it PC Game Pass? Is it Android Game Pass? Like, be a little bit more concise. Like, you can still offer alternatives, but have, like, a main focal point. So, so RGT, are you saying don't go on and uh, promote that you can play Starfield on a cloud subscription and not even need a console? <laughs> yeah, like, that, 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 that brings me to my next point is the marketing. The marketing for the brand is horrible. Because right now, in all honesty, let's assume that everything we saw at the Xbox Developer Direct does make it this year onto Xbox. I think Xbox has the best first party exclusives this year. Nintendo. Yeah, great year. Great year for them. Nintendo doesn't have shit. They have remakes and remasters and Super Princess Peach, at least as far as we know right now. But then Xbox also said in June, we're going to learn about more games. But let's just assume that that's that. What is PlayStation doing? Like, this should be the year that they, they literally should... said, see you in 2025. <laughs> yeah. Like, this should be the year that Xbox is laser focused. Be like, hey, you want exclusives? Hellblade, Avowed, Indiana freaking Jones. Like, this is where you play the games. This is where you need to be. This is what we're doing. Game Pass, blah, blah, blah. We've got other games coming in. We got these games, third party games. Like, I just feel like their marketing really lets them down to the point of where some people that own an xbox don't realize what all you can do on there or what all is available on there and another thing this is a personal thing the xbox store 
on the Xbox Series sucks. I want to see what Xbox and Xbox 360 games I can buy, and there's no way to filter it. There's no way to filter by system. What are we doing here? I want to see a list of games that are available. You have to, like, pick one when it pops up on your search. Like, say, Crimson Skies picks up on your search. And then you have to pick one. You have to pick that and then look at see what else you might like. And then you scroll through just a random list and there'll be, like, Xbox and Xbox 360 shit on there. Isn't it there? Nuts. Wait, there's a backwards compatibility section there in the store. Where? <laughs> you Where? Let me I have looked high and i dude all i did last night was try to find it and i I would type in the search i'd be like okay well let me just try xbox 360 no that doesn't work only thing that popped up was alien hominid 360 oh hold on i i let me see i I should be able to uh add uh the thing here uh you guys won't be able to see it but i is definitely on here uh for sure um Tell me where, because I was in that store for a good 15 minutes looking for that son of a bitch. I was looking under uh, categories, genres, everything, All searching right. everything. All right, Attic, I'm going a, I'm to a, uh, cover you uh, briefly. All right, so I got the Xbox dashboard up. Uh, I'm going to go to the store. I feel like it used to be there, but it's no longer there. All right, so you got, all right, when you go to games... Mm-hmm. All right, so we got games, games coming soon, top free. All right, so it's not in it. So you got to click on what, games. And it's, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. I'm going to do this. All right, you're in a store. You go to games in the sub menu, right? And you got games home, accessibility, add ons, subscriptions, new games coming soon, top. All right, cool, 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 cool. All right, so games home. I'm going to go there. Once I'm in a game's home, it gives me the big publisher cell at the top. That's the top splash with, uh, along with some new releases. Go down. They got the indie selects, which is uh, highlighted under the uh, game spotlight. And then you got by genre. Uh, mm-hmm. It used to be there, but it's no longer there. I'm telling you. Wow. What are we looking for? The, there, there was original xbox and 360 games that i can purchase on yeah the wow have, you, you can't you can't just look for those what the fuck are we doing here oh that's so you have to search the individual games yeah now. yeah yeah they that's need oh bro come on i oh what man are we doing? that's one of the coolest things hey, about you know what's it. funny optimizations you can't uh you you can't even get those games either so what do you mean like th- type in like type in Fable One. You cannot gift the uh, 360 or Xbox One games. You can only gift uh, Xbox. Oh, Call of Duty Black Ops oh, yeah. is on sale for fourteen ninety nine. You all right? You can't because they're not native games. They don't have that. I I can understand Which, that. You know, whatever. But like, I just want to be able to look through that list and be like, oh, I never checked out this. And game. so you go to is the. There, is there not a filter in the store? Oh, yeah, no. He he goes to. So crazy. I see what happens. He goes to the specific game, right? And they go all the way at the bottom, and then they start showing up all the, the similar games. Similar games. They, I swear to God, there used to be a way to filter it. Yeah, there was. It. I don't know what. Like, all right. I wish I had like the connections. That some uh, of these people had just to get them to do basic stuff like, dude, like there should backwards compatibility should be like a a a, a, a selling point. Yeah, it should be feature. one of the the top three, top four things in the store that you click on. Xbox classics, call it that. Call <laughs> you it. You know what it is. <laughs> wow, that uh, I can't believe we. Oh wow, I thought I. Wow, they really. <laughs> wow. It's not even like I didn't even. Yeah, you really have to search for it. Yeah, they 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 gotta change that for sure. You know what's new in here? Accessibility in games is the second one down. So that probably replaced <laughs> backwards compatibility. Careful. That yeah, yeah right. that's Kids probably what. The edge. <laughs> yeah, that's probably what did it. Accessibility in gaming. You say they uh, can all like their system can only hold like one or the other. <laughs> there uh, are 657 360 games and 61 Xbox games, and there's no way, unless you know the name of the game you're looking for, there's no way. 
to find him. I'm gonna do that a video. Crazy. I'm gonna do a Great. video. You gave me a video idea. Hey, to rant. Have at it, man. RGT, shout out to him. Yo, Attic, we have a Patreon question and just one this week. Uh, but it's very long winded. Um, it's from K. How do you, what is T A I J H spell? Ty? Cage? Ty? Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Cool. He says, or What Taj. less? Taj. Yeah. Uh, Taj is a nice name. He says, What lesser known Xbox IPs do you think would be successful enough on PlayStation to revitalize the series and bring them back from the dead? Why do you think Microsoft refuses to expand their most popular IPs, Halo, Gears, etc., to different genres in the same vein of Mario? All right, these are three different questions. Okay. Objectively, in 2024, what reasons are there to buy an Xbox console that doesn't include because I have friends on Xbox? All right. One question at a time. Let's tackle it. The first question is, what lesser known Xbox IPs do you think would be successful enough on PlayStation to revitalize the series and bring them back from the dead. RGT, I'm going to you for that one. Go ahead. It's an Xbox franchise? Yeah, a dead one that can be revitalized as a multi-plat. Conquer. You said Conquer. Conquer, yeah. Okay. Conquer's Bad Fur Day or whatever. I'm saying either Lost Odyssey or Blue Dragon, one of those two that's 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 fair okay that's still in the vein of a that's an obvious game uh, i mean they own ips yeah so. but that's an obvious game that playstation you would think plus since is a you know jrpgs and stuff like that yeah blue dragon lost odyssey um do they own 99 nights or no or that was just like a one-time deal i have no clue what you're even talking about what's it called 99 uh, nights in nine or something like that the cover the cover art yeah that was the one that was like uh, Dynasty Warriors, right? It was developed by Q Entertainment and Fantagram. That's the crazy. I'm looking at the um, the 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 case. It's crazy mm-hmm. looking. Oh, uh, Microsoft Game Studios was the publisher, so yeah, I would assume they they most likely own it if they. Did that, that was during the 360. During the 360, that was the best box. Yeah, they best were effort. snatching all those IPs that they, they were. That they was their best here. effort. They made a, a sequel that was published by Konami. Mm-hmm. So I wonder. It still was. No, I don't think it wasn't. Yeah, it was still an Xbox exclusive. I don't know. Do you do you think the uh, original fables would do anything on a playstation yeah they would uh but with the new one coming out i mean that i think that alone is going to revitalize the uh, franchise um i'm going to say a a dead xbox i i can only go back to uh the 360 um as there were a lot of uh earlier games there um Shoot. Their most popular ones still exist. Maybe Viva Pinata. <laughs> like I mean, yeah, I, I mean that's the uh, an answer to Animal Crossing. I don't know. Like they, maybe that one. Like the play. brute brute force. You know uh, the uh, the fighting game. PlayStation people like fighting. Games. Yeah. Uh, well, it's Killer Instinct technically dead. I <laughs> mean, but um. His second question is, why do you think Microsoft refuses to expand their most popular IPs, Halo Gears, etc., to different genres in the same vein of Mario? Now, Mario has been around with, you know, you got Mario Golf, Mario Kart Racing, you got Mario RPG, you got uh, Mario Maker, you have uh, uh, Paper Mario, you have, um, there's so many damn Mario, Mario Tennis, uh, it's Mario Baseball, Super Strikers. Smash Bros, Strikers. That's a golf game, right? No, that's uh, a soccer game. Soccer, okay. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, well, I, it's the, easier to do that with Mario since it's still uh, like a children's game. Yeah, I mean, Mario is, is a mascot more so than... You could put Mario in a lot of different situations. I don't think a lot of people 
want to play Marcus Phoenix baseball, <laughs> you know, where you got the, the Lancer in the, yeah. the bat or something like that. You could do it with a banjo, but I feel like you should have done that, you know, 20 plus years ago. Yeah. When when you got rare from Nintendo and just been like, OK, you know, banjo is going to be one of the, the flagship mascots of the thing of our brand. So, you know, they wanted to go in a different direction. I mean, the Xbox was kind of viewed as, I think, at least in my opinion, I, I think the Xbox is viewed as the adult console. The yeah. PlayStation 2 was in the middle and then the GameCube kind of had the kitty narrative attached to that. So, you know. I, I, a lot of those, a lot of those IPs, I mean, you know, they kind of did it with, um, Halo Wars. It was kind of, you know, an offshoot thing, mm-hmm. but I don't know. But yeah, they had, yeah, they had Halo Wars. They had Gears Tactics. Gears Tactics. Um, we haven't seen like a Xbox All-Stars mashup in any way. And they don't have any like Smash Brothers clone or no kart racer that features them that's the only thing but that at that point you're using like more so the xbox universe of ips versus taking a single ip and putting them through different multiple different genres right what about you attic any thoughts on that sorry i you guys keep breaking up um what'd you say no, uh, his second question was, why do you think Microsoft refuses to expand their most popular IPs, Halo, Gears, etc., to different genres the same, in the same vein of Mario? You know, there's all sorts of different Mario games in different genres. Why isn't uh, Halo in so many, in, or Gears in so many of those different genres on the Xbox side? I think because that, that's like a no, no comeback return kind of thing. Like, you know, I think a lot of people, even if it was just like old old halos like the master chief collection mm-hmm. they like especially the casual person would see halo on playstation and then just like uh especially if they're an older casual person i i don't know if like maybe that's just like in my head or if that's not realistic but i think a lot yeah. of people if they saw master chief on the playstation platform they would automatically devalue the xbox in general because even if you don't know that the newer ones aren't coming to Xbox. You're going to see the older ones and be like, oh, so everything's coming. Yeah. Um, no, but this question was more so into the um, the genres of like, why is it like, like, for example, if they did Halo baseball or Halo kart racing or like, you know, stuff like that. Oh, oh, I don't know. Uh, maybe it's because like, you know, we were saying earlier that that kind of shit's a risk true and then uh his final question is objectively in 2024 what reasons are there to buy an xbox console that doesn't include because i have friends on xbox game pass yeah yeah i I agree (laughs) game pass is it only exists on xbox and pc guys on my pc and my xbox yeah so if you want to if you need it in need of a console and then in 2024 it has the best games coming this year of all platforms. Yeah. So, as it stands right now, for sure. So hopefully that uh, answers that. Shout out to Todd or Tay, Ty, uh, for the question. Uh, you've kind of, yeah, you've, you've fed us enough questions for um, uh, the episode. That's, that's pretty good. And shout out to all the Patreons on uh, Weapon, Wheel, Weapon Wheel Patreon. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, podcast special edition. Shout out to rgt85 for uh blessing us with his uh, presence and and being a good sport and providing great great insight awesome content creator uh on uh youtube and uh always looking forward to your daily videos you got anything you want to say before we get out of here yeah thanks for having me on this is fun um i like to talk about other things besides nintendo from time to time so it's nice <laughs> Be able to spend I don't even consider day. you a Nintendo content creator. I consider you a variety content creator. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, check me out on RGT85. Shout out to all the Weapon Wheel people. I always enjoy doing the show. It's always a good time. Probably. I, I actually, it's my favorite podcast, if I got to be honest. I would rather do Weapon Wheel than Spawncast, but you know. <laughs> 
John gets a little too vanilla for me. <laughs> it's nice to not be the craziest person on. Yeah, the table. I, I've I've heard you start going on, and they just like cut it off like completely. <laughs> We're not talking about that. We're moving on. <laughs> and I'm like, damn it. <laughs> His colleague says, I like to smoke too much. So when I see people get into the smoke and, su- and it's shut off like a vowel, I'm like, damn it. Right, that would that would have been entertaining. Oh, man. Uh, awesome, man. Thank you. Uh, Addict, anything going on? I know you just came fresh out the, you know, the, uh, you know, hold the line, King David's uh, show. Are uh, you doing a whole lot with the different pr- productions you're doing and assisting in different podcasts and uh, YouTube channels? Um, I'm definitely going to need a, a thumbnail for you as I try to find these Xbox 360 and original Xbox games for my next video, <laughs> courtesy of RGT85. Um, what you got going on? You can find me on Twitter at Lord Addict IOP. Um, I'm going to be streaming more um, Final Fantasy Remake, uh, you know, up until Rebirth. You know, I'm really... Unlike Smooth, I'm really looking forward to that game. I can't wait to play that fucking game. Uh, you know, especially like the fan theories that's just going around just bonkers. I can't wait to see who's right, who's wrong. It's going to be a fantastic time. Uh, obviously, gaming addict. Right now, I'm getting dragged through the uh, to the Xbox streets. People got me by the hair, just dragging me through. I kind of feel like that chick off Game of Thrones that was walking down, like almost butt ass naked, and people throwing rocks at her. <laughs> Like it's like ah uh, this 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 uh you know they 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 ain't feeling me but you know if if you got offended just because you know I believe that you know what I believe uh, then you can fuck yourself uh, because uh, <laughs> at the end of the day it's like look like it's one thing to disagree with me it's another thing to dogpile on me to try to silence my opinion so uh, it is what it is at that point but i uh, appreciate you coming on rgt it's the first time i think i've ever podcasted with you i believe so it was a good time awesome awesome maybe that is final fantasy remake not coming to pc day and date no it's already remake no rebirth no rebirth will come out later this is why square enix is stupid worst publisher ever i think there was a note that sony has exclusivity for like three months i think it was um on this game so maybe after that yeah know. this is why i don't like square enix agreeing to deals like that just are because square enix is uh, notorious for coming telling you they underperform for decisions they made for spoken final fantasy 16 foam stars we probably won't even hear about that like it it, it makes no sense like wait a minute foam stars is a that's on pc right please tell me it's on pc Who makes a games as a service game that relies on players? An exclusive. All right, we can end the show, guys. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you all. Thank you all. This is why I don't like Square Enix. (laughs) 